Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Ken Carey, and this is the Thought Leader Thursday webinar here at Script the Screen. I really appreciate you joining us. And so anyways, this webinar today is really interesting because uh, a couple of years ago, we started with a campaign for Blink, and Blink is the home monitoring system that is owned by Amazon. And I had the opportunity to interview um, Don Sulsinger, and he was one of the co-founders of the company we, as we were shooting our direct-to-consumer campaign. And this interview is really interesting because it talks about why the company got into direct-to-consumer, what their challenges were as a business, and how the direct-to-consumer campaign worked. And I can talk about that on the back end because this is really a full circle journey. So it's very interesting. So stay, th stay through to the whole thing. And I'll be answering some questions on the back end of the webinar because I think that it'll, it'll bring up some questions from the point of, you know, here's this business making a big financial decision to get in direct to consumer and then why they did it. And at the end, what did it do? What were the results and how has it performed? So I see that we have um, a few people in the webinar. And this is a global webinar. I see that we have uh, somebody from Switzerland and somebody from Italy as well. So thank you very much. That's that's awesome. Um, it's great to know that you could have this webinar make a big difference around the world. So hopefully it makes a big difference. All right. So, um, you know, I want to ask a poll question, and if you can just chime in on it, has, have you or your business ever done a direct-to-consumer campaign? And if you have, you know, well, you know, how has it worked and all that kind of stuff. But really, just have you done it and just let us know, all right? So um, I'll be in answering questions on the back end of this and throughout if you decide to ask some questions um, while the interview is going. But until then... Um, enjoy the webinar, and I look forward to talking to you on the other side. All right, so we're on set doing our Blink um, national direct response campaign, and I'm on set with Don Schulzinger, right. and he is one of the co-founders co of Blink right. and vice president of sales and marketing, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So this is this is a great opportunity because we're going to go really deep in terms of how the product came about and the process to where we are today and how it got to that point and, and um, where it goes from this, this, this point on. So, so now tell me a little bit about um, your background and how Blink even became about. I come from a semiconductor background, mm -hmm. an engineering and technology background where mm -hmm. we develop chips for other people to make products, mm -hmm. and typically in video technology, right. video and image processing. And I've spent my career, for the most part, selling that technology to large companies in Asia and the United States, uh, selling video processing and imaging technology for a variety of applications. It could have been for uh, video discs and Blu-ray and cable TV mm -hmm. and satellite and all these kind of things where video is central to the business. Right. Um, the way Blink came around, was that we had been making chips for other people to make cameras. Mm -hmm. So we had developed some technology, low cost, very power efficient, very small, and we were selling that to other people who were making camera devices. Mm -hmm. And one day we decided that we were gonna actually transition from selling on an OEM basis where we sell the technology to other people to right. make products, where, so we would make the products ourselves and sell that direct to consumer. So, uh, and the inspiration for Blink was twofold. One was we saw that other camera companies were doing well, mm -hmm. and we knew that we had technology to make a unique product, the battery-based product that Blink is today. Right. And we also felt that uh, we wanted to transition out of the OEM business because the OEM business is characterized by selling really inexpensive things, right. like a chip that costs 50 cents or a dollar, mm -hmm. selling hundreds of millions of them, which is very challenging because in that environment there were a lot of competition. Yeah. And we wanted to sell devices like cameras. They cost tens of dollars or hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it was an opportunity to make more money. And mm -hmm. we had this unique technology that we could bring to bear. So we said, OK, let's prove the point. Okay. That consumers will buy this technology. And we said, OK, we're going to do a Kickstarter campaign. So we created a prototype. 
we put it up on Kickstarter, and lo and behold, in about six months, we had a million dollars of sales and 7,000 customers in the Kickstarter campaign. And we said, okay, great. Consumers really like the idea of a battery operated camera that doesn't have any wires and can be put anywhere in the home or outside mm -hmm. the home. And after the Kickstarter campaign, we basically completely shifted the focus of the company away from being a chip business to being in the blink business. Right, a direct-to-consumer business. direct-to-consumer business. And so we refinanced the company and we started hiring more people and we put the thing in production. Mm -hmm. And then by January of 2016, we actually launched the first camera, which was the indoor blink camera. Mm -hmm. That did really well. And after listening to our customers, everybody wanted an outdoor camera. And that's when we decided to build the XT camera. So that's how long was the indoor camera around and into the XT? Yeah, so the, it, in January of 2016, we launched the indoor camera. By January of 2017, we launched the XT camera. Okay. So a year later. Now the indoor camera kept selling. Right. Um, but the XT camera just exploded. It really did. So that was well. the next next phase of differentiation for you, right? Yes, yes. Just going yes. outdoors. It was going outdoors. And it really came down to the fact that customers kept telling us what they want, right? That's the key to, this, to business yes. in general. Yeah. The key to this type of business is to listen to your customers. So the customers come back and said, we like this, we like this, we like this, but what we really want is an outdoor camera. Right. So we put out a, a Facebook post about our indoor camera and lots and lots of comments. Oh, that's great. We love your product, but where's the outdoor camera? And so we took that to heart uh -huh. and built the XT camera. And as you now know, we're up to the XT2, which is right. the second generation. And again, that two-way audio feature is the most requested feature. Okay, I was ask about again, that. listening to our customers. Uh, that's there's a number of things they want, but that was sort of a highlight right. item. It came wanted. to the, it rose to the top. It rose to the top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I always say, and I think it's absolutely fascinating. That one of the great things about direct to consumer marketing is that you can ask your customer base what they want and then you just build what they want versus spending all this time and money and energy right. trying to figure out right. what they want right. 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 and opportunity costs, right. right? Absolutely. And that's one of the key things that was interesting about the way we put the Blink business together is we circumvented the typical process of going through on, on an OEM basis, right. right? We didn't go to Canon or Sony or Panasonic or some one of these guys and say, take our chip, make a product and go sell it because that would take years mm -hmm. and the the connection to the customer is broken. Yes. We, as the developers of the technology, would not have been able to hear directly from those customers. We would have come filtered through all sorts of layers of people that have their own ideas about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So by going direct to the consumer, initially via Kickstarter, and then yeah. selling directly to the customer, we had a much better connection sure. with which to hear the feedback and then act accordingly and bring out the products that the customers want. Beautiful. It's a beautiful model, and I and I say, you guys did that because that's how you wanted to take the next level to your business. I say that to companies who are that want to get in the direct to consumer business because a lot of the brands that we work with are they have retailers, they have Amazon, they really don't have a direct sales channel on their. They, they say go to their website, their website, but you get lost in an ocean over there, mm -hmm. right? And they're at the mercy of those other channels. Right. That's right. And so how would you say creating your own direct consumer channel for Blink gives you the autonomy? You can support those other channels because that's exactly what we're doing here. You can support them, but you have the control and it's not the tail wagging the dog, right? Right, right, right. absolutely. It's all about getting your message out mm -hmm. and being able to hear back directly what, what comes back. So we say something about the product, we're thinking of this, we wanna do that, here's how it works, here's how it doesn't work. Do you like black, do you like white? All yeah. those things come directly from us. If we were gonna to try to go through retail offline, mm -hmm. you, you just can't do that, right? You have to put out the product and see what happens. Right. So in our view of the world, if you don't have that direct connection where you can reach out to your customers and get the feedback directly, you won't be as successful. Yeah, yeah. So think about um, how you change, I mean, you literally change your business model of a company, oh, right? Completely. So talk to the companies that are um, at retail, they're at Amazon, they have these other channels and they, they know building a direct to consumer channel is, important could it should be should be important but they realize they want to check into it what 
What would you say to them that are the benefits of doing it? And I know it's a little bit of repeating what you said, but think from the mind of a, of a company who's, who's just been doing it the old way for so long. It boils down to taking out the guesswork, right? Mm -hmm. Eliminating the guesswork. You, if you don't do it this way, you're guessing. You're putting out a product and you're seeing what's happening. You don't have the wherewithal to identify the right thing to do. And so if you want to be successful, what we've learned mm -hmm. is take out the guesswork. Yeah. Don't guess. We survey our customers constantly. We have you know, that direct connection that allows us to get the feedback mm -hmm. that we need to make the right decisions. I think one of the wonderful things about direct to consumer is now that you've acquired this database, and you can talk to them and they can see what you want. How do you take that and, and how do you continue to serve them with potentially a, a reoccurring income? Is that part of what you guys looking to do? And because there is no subscriptions and that's one of the beautiful selling points. Right. So there's a there's a point where you can scale with is selling 10 million cameras. But then what do you do with that database to create long-term sustainability and profitability? Right, right. So the key is, obviously, there's multiple ways to do that. One of them is to try to get people to pay a monthly fee. Right. Obviously, we've chosen not to do Correct. that. And there's a class of customer out there that really appreciates the fact that we do not require them to pay monthly fees. I'd say there's a lot of customers. There's a lot of customers, <laughs> yes. I think we've proven that yeah. a lot of customers. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're asking a good question. How do you then get lifetime value? How do you maximize the lifetime value? And the key there is to understand the applications. Because as hmm. we've seen from Blink, initially they buy because they're thinking security. Mm -hmm. And then they come back and they put it in their house and they say, oh, I can actually monitor the garage. I can see when somebody came in the back door and not just the front door. I can see if there's something in my attic that's making noise. At right, me. right. So when we start to understand the consumer's usage, we start to see opportunities to offer them more value and to sell them more things. So we have products in the roadmap that we take that into account and we yeah. make more products that will interest those consumers mm -hmm. and solve more of the problems that they have. So the interesting thing I take from that is there are some models that want to do a subscription or are going to send the same product over and over again because it's a consumable, but Blink isn't a consumable, but because we're so <laughs> tuned, apparent, in. tuned into our, our, yeah. our, our, our database, we know that each product launches a new idea and a new this and new right. that. That's right. And that is right. sustainability. That's right. So yeah. instead, of, instead of telling the consumer, pay us a monthly fee so you can use the system, we tell them, tell us what you do with the product so we can learn from you and give you even better value for your money. That's beautiful. Perfect. Perfectly said. Um, how, did, how did the name Blink? come about. Uh, There's got to be a great story it, there. There is a good story there. It's kind of a nerdy story, uh, but I'll tell you. So yeah. if you think of what a blink is, a blink is you close your eye mm -hmm. and then open your eye. What our cameras do is they stay off and they open. So it's the inverse of a blink. Got it. But it to be even more technology oriented around that. If you look at the way the blink logo is constructed, it's blink with a line on top. Uh -huh. That's where we started it. And that line in technical speak inverts what's going on. So it's an inverted blink. So the name blink stuck. I got that's it. how it came I up. I got it. And there was a clever marketing guy who I think came up with the blink even without thinking that. Right. But then we thought about it and when you had the line on top, now it makes it even made, more it sense. Made, it made sense from a technology point and of view. And I love the fact that it's an inverted thing that it, when you say it's kind of nerdy. Yeah. And I, I want to take the nerdy aspect of yeah. it because I think that from your from your perspective, I'm, I'm not familiar with your co-founders, but being, you know, an MIT engineer. Yeah. I mean, you know these kinds of yeah, things, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, no, and all the founders were all technical people from, okay. from technical schools. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, it sort of made sense. Yeah. The, the light bulb went off <laughs> when we thought about it that way. So when you started on Kickstarter, and then you got into retail and then you sold on Amazon and obviously business was going well. What made you say, we need to go direct to consumer in a bigger way, in a different way, direct via television, digital, social, because you did some digital and social, but mm -hmm. as I think that you know, or maybe have felt is that you can launch, you can, you can have a nice business, 
but you really scale and make money when you go mass because there's a difference between making a living and making money right right oh yeah 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 for sure and uh, it was it's interesting when we started we were all digital mm -hmm. right and then at a consumer electronics show uh, a representative who had been sent by qbc came to us uh -huh. and said the people at qbc have seen your product they're very interested um, and that rolled into actually doing business on QVC and we had a 10 minute airing and then an hour airing and then a whole day airing right. one of the TSVs and then multiple TSVs and that went really, really well. That helped us drive then into offline retail and the product now is available at Best Buy mm -hmm. and there's going to be many more stores where it's available. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea that really stuck from the QVC experience is how important it is to be able to see the product in action. Yeah. And that you can only do through video. Yep. Uh, and no matter how many digital ads you put out there and how many six second Instagram clips you do, yeah. you still don't really understand the product until right. you've either had it in your hands yep. or you've seen it on TV. And so well, that's why we decided we had to take what we learned and continue to do that further and right. broader and not just limited to QVC. And that's why we decided to bring it to TV like this. And I think in what that, to me, when I take that information down, it's like, you had to tell the story. You had to make Absolutely. it visceral, tell the story, yeah. content and context, so people can understand, oh, I can see this in my house. This makes sense to me. And you just can't do that in 30 seconds. Ab absolutely. It, it just You have to tell the story and you have to right. bring in testimonials, you have to bring in demos, you have to really see the whole the whole shoot and match right. to be able to understand what it is, how it works, and why it's valuable to me. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think that one of the things that a direct-to-consumer model does is that when you, when you have the ability to do that, now that you've given that person the complete understanding, they have Everybody has their own way of how they want to do commerce, right? Mm -hmm. If I see the show and I go and I go to Best Buy and go, oh, yes, that's that blink. Pro I need to see it, feel it, touch it, right? Or they go to QVC and I, I like that host. I trust her. I trust him. Right. Or they go to the Amazon and see the reviews and go, that gives me confidence to buy it. Or I go to the, the microsite that we're building together and say, I, I got all the information I need. I want to order now. Right. So it, it makes all those channels work. And That's same right. with digital. It reminds them, oh, in their Facebook, thing, oh, there's that blink thing because I saw it on TV and I, right? It's that whole. Absolutely. One of the things that we also learned, and you can tell I learned a lot going from semiconductors into this yeah. is that you have to have all the channels working in concert everything works together it even goes back to the concept of attribution how do yeah. we really know what it's costing us to get consumers when we're selling in all these channels it's right. hard to say but we know that everything feeds on everything else mm -hmm. and so to have a complete picture in the channel in channel marketing right you have to do all these things because they all leverage one another right. this is a critical component yeah in my mind. so when you decided to go to um direct to consumer with video or drtv or something like that what were the what were the decisions or what were the, what were the conversations that you have to select someone like our firm and what was it what did we bring that said okay we have confidence in these guys well uh a obviously your history mm -hmm. was critically important and the name brands that you've worked with and the work that you've done and you know us being able to really have confidence that you've been successful taking others in the direction we wanted to go mm -hmm. so that was crucial and and make and and um preserving the brand that's absolutely huge. yeah absolutely yeah because yeah, we've all seen the sham wows and the, the, the absolutely the crud right yeah, 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 yeah the elephant in the room is infomercial oh my gosh right yeah, yeah. But you had to have the brand no you know we we internally referred to it we didn't want to be schlock right, right. you know we wanted to be <laughs> above that right and we wanted to make sure that people watched it felt good about it mm -hmm. um and so we felt that you guys really brought that to the table mm -hmm. and you could demonstrate that you know you had been successful mm -hmm. doing that so mm -hmm. that would i would say was critically important um and then after that it was you know working together and coming up with the the plan and how to implement the thing and giving us confidence that we really could uh have you take care of our baby right. in such a way that we were going to get back what we needed right. and feel good about it and feel proud of it that all came together and that's yeah. how we ended up coming. you know i say this all the time and i think you just said it in a in a way that differently than i say it. it's like 
So we met, we got a real understanding of the product, and then we we did research, we strategized, we planned, and now we're in the execution phase. Right. Because you can plan research to your blue in the face. It's can you execute? It's right. really so now we're in the first part of execution phase. The next part is when the show gets to get together. And the third part is now that it's out there, how do we optimize? That's critical to execution. So I bring that back to working with our marketing and management group M2 because those th those people are giving you the ability to do things that people don't really understand about uh -huh. direct to consumer. You guys, you have to have all those levers on the back end right. working. Right. Tell me about That's that. Right. Why why that was important? Yeah. So, you know, obviously Blink is growing. We've got a lot going on. Uh, multiple channels, expansion overseas, plenty to do. Yeah. So it was important to us that we could find an organization that would also, to some degree, offload us from all those nuances and details and things that you have to do, not only with production, mm -hmm. but also posts yeah. afterwards, getting it out there and then optimizing it to get the best we can out right. of the assets that we're creating. Right. And so having that ability so that we could basically say, hey, we're partnering, you're really taking this forward and allowing us to continue running the things that we know how to do while right. you do the things that you know how to do. Right. I that was critical. I appreciate that. And that and it was interesting there is that knowing how to do that in in the in the specific business of direct response television. Exactly. That's, no, that's important. exactly right. That's what I'm thinking. You know, we're experts, you know, we're part of Amazon. We know digital marketing, we know yeah. retail marketing, but we went internally within Amazon and said, hey, somebody done DRTV around here before? And there really wasn't much there, right? And so we're the first to admit that we're not experts in DRTV. Mm -hmm. We think we know what we can get out of it. We right. think we understand, we under, certainly understand why we're doing this, mm -hmm. but to actually execute it, you know, womb to tomb, you know, all yep. the way throughout all the phases mm -hmm. and having somebody that actually has done that and can execute on our behalf working together mm -hmm. is that's that's what we were looking for, right? We couldn't take this on. We couldn't learn how to do this and right. go execute it. It just wouldn't work. Talk about talk about opportunity costs, uh, exactly. and, and, right? Yeah. And then yeah. by the time you're trying to figure that out, someone else comes up and, and knocks you in the teeth. That's right. And, and we've got, I mean, our growth is really strong mm -hmm. and um, we just have our hands full, yeah. right? And so what we want to do is we want to give you what you need yep. to put together the, what we need right. so that we can go together and execute each in our own domains. Right. So with all that happening, at the end of the day, it, there has to be ROI positive. You, you know the direct-to-consumer direct aspect is that I want my media dollars, I'm assuming, and I know the answer to this, but I'm going to set you up a little bit. Uh -huh. I'm assuming you want your media dollars working as hard as possible. Mm -hmm. If I'm putting out X amount of dollars, I want to know how quickly I'm going to get Z, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Tell, Talk to me how this direct-to-consumer model that we're doing fits into that because it's so different from equity where equity says, here's $50 million, I'm going to show you how I'm going to sell it. Mm -hmm. And we're here, we're saying, here's a million dollars, let me show you how I can turn it into $50 million. Right, right, it, right. I mean, that's very, very raw, but... Mm -hmm. Well, you know, our, our calculus, and obviously we have a large organization with which we, within which we exist, right. and within which we have to justify what we're doing, um, but our calculus is we spend a lot on cost. You know, our cost of acquisition, we understand through the different channels that we use. You know, mm -hmm. There's different margins, there's different cost structures, yeah. all these different things that we have to take into account when we build our marketing plans. Um, we know what our cost is through broadcast on QVC. Mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to achieve here is to be able to spend incremental marketing dollars in a new area mm -hmm. and make sure that we get a return on investment that warrants that. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, cal the calculus here is that we're going to spend media dollars Yep. We're going to get some amount just directly back, yep. and then we're going to see lift in other channels, right? And so uh, we, you know, looking at the numbers, our calculus is that that's going to be profitable, right? And we're going to be able to make money doing that. Um, and we're working internally within Amazon, obviously, mm -hmm. to put in place the ability to track what's going on through the other channels. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we have a target mm -hmm. and we hope to meet or exceed that target. Right. And obviously we'll know soon enough yeah. When, yeah. when all this starts. Yeah. But we're excited about it because we think that we can bring those dollars and make them profitable. And that's that's what 
we're gonna do. Yeah, I, I, you have such a wonderful product, and I'm, I'm very confident that's gonna happen. And what you're gonna see is when, when it's on television, in a certain way, it legitimizes right. the product because people don't. It's not like it's a you know a big brand name that everybody knows about. You know that, Absolutely. even though you sold tons of product. You got to create, get to that point where people know the blank name, and it's gonna, it's gonna increase because it's all multi-channel. It's gonna increase right. Amazon. It's going to increase your your retail sales, and then being able to, you know, take those silos and understanding how that all worked, and go, oh, maybe the ROI or the or maybe efficiency ratio is X or right. B because it all comes together. And that's right. that's really the at the end of the day, that's. The big uh, benefit of direct to consumer, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. No, we we see that um, the product sells. Yeah. Uh, we've sold it well, and we've also seen, you know, that our customers are real fans of the product, and they they talk about it, and word gets out. But I don't think there's any substitute for exposure in this channel, right? Yeah. In terms of being on TV, and I think yeah. direct response TV is a way to get in front of the consumer and have them know our brand know the product, know the value, know the benefit for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I do agree, it's going to lift all, all boats will rise yeah. as we go through this yeah. process. Yeah. So now that we're here, we're in the process, and since we started talking, literally we started talking two years ago, right? Um, what's the biggest surprise to you at this, at this point since we started working on this campaign? What, what, what surprises you the most? <laughs> Not to be facetious, but the biggest surprise is how how much involvement our legal people had <laughs> in getting these this done. Yeah. We spend more time on legal than I think we spend with you guys. It's unbelievable. Wow. So that honestly, that's my biggest surprise is how how much of a challenge it can be to get a program like this through yeah. when you're part of a large company. Mm -hmm. Now getting back to, to this, yeah. actually to this. Yeah. Um, my biggest surprise is actually being here on set. A how much I've enjoyed yeah. <laughs> just watching the thing happen. Um, uh, how involved it really is in terms of doing this. I mean, you just look at what's going on here. It's yeah. just, it's fantastic, but it's, it seems, it's, it's an amazing process that you yeah. go through the part. And then I'll be um, amazed looking forward to yeah. see when the final product comes out, when you watch what's going on here and uh -huh. you see all the shots that are being taken and see that all woven together into yeah. something that you can then see the story from beginning to end. I'm sure I'll be amazed at uh, how that is. Yeah, let me ask you a little bit of a it's kind of a self-serving question but i'm gonna ask it anyways um since we first met you met our team how important has it been to you that we are i think you can tell we're all hands on deck our team is here and it's not it wasn't just put off to somebody else and an account executive this and this team's doing it does that make a difference to you what does that mean to you? well I, absolutely i mean first of all um you know, a lot of the work David handled, yeah. uh, David and Jason, Correct. but uh, sort of I've been kind of yeah. watching in the background but yeah. to be here and to and see it all. They're amazing. Oh, they've been, done, they've been yeah. great. But to see it all actually here and to see the level of involvement, you know, yourself included, I mean, that everybody here um, has been really great. I, I've really uh, been impressed and mm -hmm. appreciative mm -hmm. of, uh, of that level of involvement. Right? I see you in the script. I see you changing the words. I see the whole team. Oh, what about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. Let's make this a little better. Let's optimize here. All that is really powerful. Yeah. And it gives me the confidence that we, you know, made the right choice and that we're awesome. gonna we're gonna be successful. One thing that was really important to myself and to everyone on our team, you know, Barbie and Joni and Shayna and Janie and everybody on our whole team was when we sat in the conference room and we saw little glimpses of the testimonial, uh -huh. it just it, it just warmed my heart to see how you reacted to it. What what <laughs> that well, I tell was, me about I that. was I mean honestly I was blown away because yeah. I, I I know that we have happy customers. I mean I read the, many of the reviews, mm -hmm. I see videos that come back from customers. But to see people talking in such glowing terms about the product and how much it helps them, I mean, what could be better, yeah. right? I mean, we're all in this for the numbers, yeah. right? but in the end of the day, it really feels good yeah. when you help people, yeah. right? I mean, I always say, did you did you matter? Yeah. At the end of the day, did you matter? Yeah, 
Because it doesn't, all the other stuff is superfluous, but did you matter? Did you make a yeah, difference? No, we, I think, we have I think made a difference. That. Yeah, we have made a difference in people's lives. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's very, that's heartwarming. Yeah. And that's important to us because that's the kind of people we like, we like to be in business. Yeah. See, yeah. People who are doing something, do we, are we capitalists? Absolutely. But do we, can we make a difference? Yeah. Even that's a cherry on top. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Last question I have for you. So in terms of blank and marketing, what really works? What's worked for you? Um, well, first of all, the product. I mean, the product works. It does what it's supposed to do. I mean, right. what, what could be better, right? You make something, you say it's going to do a concept. something. And what a concept. It, it's, there's real value. So to me, the number one thing about what we do is that we offer a real value to the customer. The customer gets what they paid for. Mm -hmm. They pay a reasonable price for what they get and the value they get is really there they they get what they paid for mm -hmm. um, and to me that's that's critical yeah right um, so you know the other thing that works is and this is just you know about the company itself mm -hmm. you know I've worked with some of my co-founders for a long time many 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 years and we've gone through a number of different companies and done a no number of different products but you know all and throughout the whole process though we've really come to understand what it takes to put together a business and to bring it through to success yeah and um, for me personally that's that that is something that really works it makes it all worthwhile is to be able to just take something create it get it out there have it make a difference yeah be successful with it and have a business that's, with it yeah yeah awesome. like a business I want to thank you oh well, thank you very much and I look so look forward to having this conversation again <laughs> at your offices in about eight months and we can talk about what the campaign did and, and how we're going to go forward together. That'd be terrific. All right. So that was our interview with Don at Blink. And um, it was really good to watch it again because he said a lot of really, really important things for companies thinking about being in direct to consumer. What are the things that you need to be thinking about in the future? How do they affect what you're doing today? And, you know, the process you have to go through as a business to understand how this works and how it can work for you at, in the entire enterprise. So I want to go back to um, Alonzo's question. And he asked, what are the challenges of doing a campaign with a company this size as opposed to a smaller company? I would say, you know, it was interesting that Don mentioned this is that Legal becomes a very big issue when it comes to a larger company, and that's and that's just good business. And it's they're never they're not roadblocks. They're just they're just things that um, comes down into all the way from the contract, but all, through you know what are the claims you're trying to make? How do you substantiate them? And how do we work together as a team to create claims that could be substantiated? So when they go on television, it's still powerful but also it's legal, from a legal standpoint for the company. Um, the other big challenge with a brand or, or a company this size versus a smaller one is, is that when you're dealing with a bigger company, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's an importance about the legacy of the company and the brand and the image they want to put out. And I see another question in here, which is a little bit similar, but I'll, I'll address it a little bit differently, but is that you have to, you have to really pay attention to, you know, what it is they're trying to accomplish as a brand overall. Yes, they're trying to sell product and yes, they want to create a new direct -to consumer channel to their business, but also they have to think about what does it mean overall to the brand? And that, that, that that's a big challenge. Now with a smaller company, it's it's important, but it's not as important because you're because you're getting going and you're starting to scale and you're trying to make sales. Where the larger company, you're making sales, creating another channel, but you have a, an overall um, umbrella to the business. So the, those are those are kind of the biggest challenges. And I'd say the third is is that when you're working with a, a company the size of Blink. There's just a lot of decision making and a lot of people that get, get involved and it takes a little bit longer for things to happen to turn around um, to make to make on our end to make them happen. So um, you have to think about putting those types of uh, 
solutions as they come up and, and knowing that's going to affect the timeline and just being and just being communicative about it communicative about it that that's really important um so i hope that answers your question um let's see let's see um how sheila 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 asks how did the campaign perform so i can give a little bit of information sheila obviously it's a private company and we can't give you know you know private information but i could say that they always say if something works you do it again right so we are currently on our third campaign with this company so that ought to tell you that it worked pretty good and i could tell you that um it's it's meant a lot of money to the bottom line and it's been a very big driver for the business both retail and amazon and direct so i'm excited for them because now blink is a player when you think about these legacy businesses like adt and century security and, and these big companies that have been um, in the home security business for a hundred years plus and here's this company coming out of nowhere that started on kickstarter and now has been acquired by amazon and now they're a big player they are in the conversation and it wasn't until they went to television and scale with a direct-to-consumer campaign that they really got that notoriety they were out there but once they got on television and once everybody got to see what they're all about that's when they became a big player so you know that's i hope that answers your question um not specific dollar wise but believe me it's been very very successful and not only for us as a company it's 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 just, it just feels good that we've been able to help a business like this. And as Don said, they're just excited that their product is helping people. And the ability to get that message out there and to help more people and change their lives has been fantastic. All right, so let's see. Um, Mick asks a question. So what, so what are the challenges Blink had in being a small company within a huge Amazon network? That's a great question. So um, there are smarter people at the company that can answer that question than I. But basically, um, there are there are so many um, intricacies of a big company in the Amazon network of, you know, how are they going to handle fulfillment? how are things how, how credit card processing is going to happen how does all this work when you think about amazon is probably the biggest distribution company in the world yet when it comes to a direct-to-consumer campaign they leaned on us to put it all together because it's totally different when you're talking about direct-to-consumer and television and scaling so getting th them to understand that we could probably help them a little bit better than the 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 uh, connections, you know, quote unquote, they have in their network of Amazon companies um, took a little bit of little bit of coaxing, but they trusted us and we proved it out. So there's a lot of things where companies feel like they have a better solution and it may be a better solution for their retail business. It may be a better solution for their online business, but not necessarily the best solution for a direct to consumer television business so that was one of the biggest challenges um let's see how unusual is it to use kickstarter to fund a campaign jill thank you for that question um i don't think it's very unusual um they're not the only one that we've worked with that started on kickstarter um we're actually in conversations with a couple others right now and you know, it's it's as you know, Kickstarter is a great way to to get funding and and to you know start your business, and that's really the difference between starting your business and then building it through digital, which is which is kind of building your business. But direct to consumer on television takes companies like like Blink, that was a Kickstarter business, help them build their business. Di digital helped them build it, but they they hit a ceiling and all companies do this when they're doing digital campaigns only they hit a ceiling and so what i mean by that is they get to a point where they know who their customers are 
and they do they do all kinds of you know uh like customer profiles and all this kind of stuff like audiences but after a while there's there's attrition in that outreach and you keep reaching the same people over and over and over again and it becomes more expensive to do that so you get to the point where you can build a very nice business but to scale it direct to consumer on television is the best way to do that and we've seen it over and over and over again so so from kickstarter from people getting into a direct to consumer on television it's not that uncommon it's a, a little bit of a longer road but they have a real good understanding of their business they have a uh, they have a real good understanding of what people are reacting to when you start a kickstarter campaign and you start uh gain you know, you, you get traction and you gain uh, momentum when people are donating and they're and if that's happening then do you have a product that's solving a problem and that's a great signal when you have a good funding uh campaign happen on kickstarter the real good indication that you have something that the audiences that audiences want the customers want it's how do you build it and scale it from that point on all right, so that seems to be the end of our questions. Um, unless anybody has any others, I really appreciate you being involved in this webinar. And a couple of things is that at Scripta Screen, there's a lot of people behind everything that we do here, from you know running the business to you know our team running these webinars. I want to thank everybody for that, and I want to thank you for joining us and. And if you if you found this valuable, I really would love you to share that that you found it valuable and maybe send it to other people when you get the rebroadcast. I think it would be it would be it'd be beneficial for all of us, and I would we would really appreciate it. And and finally, that you know to have this forum where we can really give in this case a real case study or get some real information from somebody who's actually doing it. It's great because the more education that we can do, the more value that we can bring, and the more questions we can answer that um, when it comes to direct to consumer, that's really great for everybody. And it's it's really the next, next level for a lot of businesses. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of myths, there's a lot of misinformation. But if you do your homework and listen to webinars like this and listen to people who have done it, You'll, you'll soon find out that it's something to investigate. And especially in this day and age in 2021, where consumer behavior and technology have finally met together and people are doing more and more business by something they see on television or something they see on digital or social. And they're making that, that relationship with the actual customer that is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. The difference is how do you how do you get people to know about you? That's the key. And that's what direct to consumer campaigns do. That's what we do as a business. You get people, your audience, your customers out there know about you. Because if they don't know about you, it doesn't matter how great your product is. That's really at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Anyway, thank you very much. And I hope you join us for our next Thought Leader Thursday webinar coming up in March. And until then, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.